Hello everybody, this is Kimchi Crypto. Today I'm going to talk about the real crypto FOMO goes on in the United States and China. And what's next? As you know, Hong Kong approved the first spot Bitcoin and Ether ETFs in drive to become crypto hub. Hong Kong approved several spot Bitcoin ETFs and spot Ether ETFs managed by China Asset Management. Harvest Global, Bosera, and Hashkey on Monday. They did not disclose the timeline of the, those ETF launch. But still, the floodgate of crypto is open in China as well. Um, Andrian Wang, CEO of some digital asset management firm, she mentioned that spot Ethereum ETF this could gain much traction because Ethereum ETF could be more influential and important compared to that of Bitcoin because investors in the world have options to gain Bitcoin exposure with Bitcoin related stocks like mining stocks or micro strategies and so forth. But there are no ETH related stocks as of now. So this is the only vehicle, Ethereum Spot ETF is the only vehicle for the, um, the global institutional investors to have, a, have an access to Spot Ethereum. China approved Ethereum Futures ETF and Ethereum Spot ETF earlier than the United States, meaning they must know the importance of Ethereum as well. The April's first two weeks saw more Ethereum loans liquidated than any month since June of 2022. On April 14th, the price of Bitcoin Ethereum was real bad. Just a day later, Bitcoin ETH price recovered as Hong Kong green lights spot crypto ETFs. And eight whales wallets bought 9,787 Ethereums after Hong Kong's approval of Ethereum Spot ETF. Expecting the Ethereum price to rise significantly. So the important question here is, what's next? Which country to follow next? What is going to happen next? UK to issue new crypto and stablecoin legislation by July, the minister says. The country passed a landmark bill in June 2023, which laid the foundation for stablecoins and other crypto to be treated as regulated financial activities. The UK will issue new legislation for stablecoins as well as crypto staking. Staking was forbidden by the SEC in the United States for, for so long, but that is allowed in the UK. An exchange and custody by June or July this year. The Conservative Party-led government has said it wants to make the UK a global hub for crypto and passed legislation last year to recognize crypto and stablecoins as regulated financial activities in the country. Hong Kong wants to be the global hub for crypto and United Kingdom wants to be the global hub for crypto as well. Real pharma goes on and goes on and on in Hong Kong and United Kingdom as well. What about Singapore? They enacted licensing requirements for crypto custody services and others. The change in scope also includes cross-border money transfers even when the money is not accepted or received in the city-state in Singapore and the facilitation of transmission of crypto between accounts and exchanges. The legislation crypto was passed in 2021 with amendments to the Payment Services Act, the framework to regulate payment service providers, but it was supposed to be enacted in the fourth quarter of 2021 but it failed. And now the amendments include, include segregating customers' assets and placing them in a trust account for the benefit of customers, maintaining proper books and records, 
and ensuring that effective systems and controls are in place. And this is important. These amendments in Singapore will take effect within six months from April 4th of this year. So even though the legislation in Singapore crypto was passed in 2021, the amendments will take effect from October of this year, later this year. So in my humble opinion, the crypto rail bull season will begin later this year or early next year. Not this Singapore, but other legislations like Mika in the European countries and the crypto legislation, including stable coins, those will be passed anyway this year, but that will be effective. That will be effective maybe in the late of this year or early next year. In addition to this, BIS, the Bank for International Settlements, they allowed every single bank in the world can to, to buy crypto assets uh, within their you know two percent reserves. This will take effect uh, from 2025 as well. So what about the United Arab Emirates? They have become a crypto hub already. They have multiple Web3 startups. They have like a free economic zone for those Web3 startups and with a very you know friendly crypto regulations. What about Japan? Japan, they have the key initiatives uh, like the tax reforms and the deregulation for Web3 startups and for the innovation in Japan. These are the countries uh, where the top crypto tax-free countries, they have very, you know, tax-free and uh, regulation-free countries in crypto in 2024. Iceland, New Zealand, Ireland, Denmark, Austria, Portugal, Slovenia, Czech Republic, Singapore, Japan, Switzerland, Canada, Hungary, and Finland. And Spot Bitcoin ETFs incorporated in only eight countries globally in November last year. And superpower countries like United States and China has joined this group. So in times of trouble, we must, we'll, we will go through multiple difficulties in the front as well in crypto investments. But please, rem please be reminded that some countries took Bitcoin as legal tender already and 10 plus countries approved Bitcoin and Ethereum spot ETFs. So global crypto former will arise everywhere and crypto revolution is just beginning now. A um, macro investor named Raul Paul, he mentioned about the crypto market cap. It's currently at around $2.8 trillion, the crypto market cap. But this will be uh, reach, this will reach, the market cap of crypto will reach 10 to $15 trillion by 2025. Meaning from here, like 4x or 5x, in just a year or two. And by the um, 2030, he mentioned the market cap of crypto will reach 100 to $200 trillion, meaning we can go from like 50x or even 100x in just six years. So you can't just afford to lose this life-changing opportunity for sure. Like I said, don't have this up. Don't mess this great opportunity in your life. Thank you for listening.